Hey everybody, Jimmy Westenberg here with Android Authority, and this is the new LG J8 ThinQ. It's LG's flagship phone for 2019, and on the surface, it's really great, but it does have some kind of gimmicky features that make me kind of question what LG's point is with this phone. Um, so let's dive right in. Okay, so at first glance, the LG G8 looks a lot like the G7 from last year. And I don't think that's great because the G7 was already a little generic looking, uh, but LG did refine it to make it feel better. The first thing you notice when you'll pick up the G8 is that it's a little bit thicker, and that's to compensate for the bigger battery, which is also a plus. And I wish more manufacturers would make their phones thicker so their batteries last longer. I've been able to make the LG G8 last me all day on a single charge. Um, I'm only getting like four hours of screen on time, but that's also with streaming a lot of podcasts, uh, so that's not going to count towards it. If you do end up switching the display resolution to Quad HD instead of the out-of-the-box Full HD, your battery is going to drastically decrease. Because this is an LG phone, it has all the extras that you'd expect. It has a headphone jack down here, which is also equipped with a Quad DAC. It also has an IP68 water resistance rating, a handy Google Assistant button on the, on the side, which I actually use quite a bit and it also has wireless charging. Now on the front of the phone, it also does look a little bit more modern than the LG G7 did for two reasons. First is that LG kind of made the sides curve around to make it feel a lot easier to hold and, and less sharp, I guess, when you're swiping around. And also because this is the very first G series phone with an OLED display. And I know what you're thinking, LG has gotten in trouble for OLED displays in the past for not being great, uh, or at least l less good than Samsung's displays. But this time around, the OLED screen is actually really nice. Colors are really accurate and you can kind of tune it to your liking. Also on the front of this display, you'll notice a little notch at the top. And honestly, it doesn't really get in the way. I don't mind it. And after a couple days of using this phone, I completely forgot about it. But you'll notice inside that notch, uh, there's a front-facing camera and two other little sensors, but there's no ear receiver. And that's because LG implemented something called a crystal sound OLED display. And I actually really like it. It produces good sound and you don't really have to worry about holding the phone up to your ear when you're on a phone call and like putting your ear in a specific place. This year you can actually like cover up the speakers on the very bottom and still like hear sound coming from the display. It's actually really nice. One of the great things LG has been doing with the G series is implementing this feature called Boombox. And it basically uses the inside of the phone as a resonance chamber to produce better, fuller audio. The problem is the LG G8 is one of the slipperiest phones I've ever used. And because the Boombox speakers vibrate the phone so much, when you put it down on a table or something and it doesn't have a case, it just vibrates, it moves so much. Actually, right when I got this, I put it on a stool, a wooden stool, and I received a phone call and just from the vibration, it slipped off the stool. So if you buy this phone, buy a case, save yourself a bunch of money. The LG G8 is a flagship phone and it has the flagship specs to back it up. It has the latest Snapdragon processor. It has six gigabytes of RAM. And I know what you're thinking. Other companies are putting in eight gigabytes and sometimes even 12 gigabytes of RAM. But I haven't had the G8 slow down on me once. No matter what you're doing on the phone, whether you're gaming or just swiping through social media or whatever, I don't think you'll have a problem with performance. And speaking of swiping through your phone, LG software is actually pretty good. It's very minimal. LG's using a lot of Google apps instead of uh, replacing it with their own stuff. And I quite like that. It's nice looking at a phone and, and not seeing a ton of duplicate apps. Now there are some, but not as many as you'd think. Now I do have one little pet peeve and I know this is just a very personal issue, but I really don't like the app drawer on this phone. It gets so annoying. Every time you download a new app, you have to like resort it alphabetically. Otherwise the new apps just go to the back of the list. And when you delete an app from the grid, it just kind of remains this open spot. It's really weird. Around back, the LG J has a dual camera setup and the main sensor is 12 megapixels and it has bigger pixel sizes this year. So low light photography should be better. 
The secondary camera is a wide angle sensor, 16 megapixels, and it has a 107 degree field of view. And this is pretty much the same wide angle sensor we got last year with the G7, and I really like it actually. You can zoom out of photos pretty wide, and you don't see much distortion in the photos like you do with some of the new Samsung phones. Overall, picture quality is good, not great. I think LG is a little bit behind the competition at this point. Now, don't get me wrong, I really do like this wide angle sensor, but images taken with the 12 megapixel sensor are just kind of lacking in detail. Everything I take is a little bit blurry and out of focus, and that's even with my arms like completely still. I found images to be just the right amount of saturation, but LG's noise reduction is a little bit too over aggressive. It struggles in high contrast situations. In some of the camera samples you can see here, a lot of the highlights are blown out. LG also threw in a night mode with this camera, it's called Night View, and it does an okay job at making everything a little bit easier to see in low lighting conditions. I don't think it's anywhere near Google Pixel's night sight, but it's decent. The LG G8 is also one of the first phones to feature portrait video mode, and it sounds cool in theory, but I don't think it works well in practice, like, at all. Basically, the dual camera system on the back can uh, attempt, at least, to separate the subject from the background, but this doesn't really work well for video. Every time I've uh, taken a video of my dog or, or somebody walking around, it just kind of looks like it's constantly trying to catch up with the subject and makes the whole video just look weird. On the front there's an 8 megapixel selfie camera and it also does okay. It has to have really good lighting conditions to get the skin tones right and I just feel like the skin tones that it does get right, it just kind of overly softens everything and it makes it look like there's a beauty mode turned on when there actually isn't. Right next to that 8 megapixel selfie shooter are two extra sensors. There's an IR illuminator and a time of flight sensor and LG calls this setup the Z camera. And basically what this does is, is it enables you to interact with your phone in different ways and more secure ways. For starters, you can use a 3D face unlock feature that is way more secure than some other phones out there. You probably won't be able to fool the G8 with just a photo of yourself like you can with some phones. Here's where it gets really weird. This whole front facing camera setup also allows you to uh, use something called hand ID and basically this records an image of the hemoglobin levels in your hand and you can use that as another way to unlock your phone. So you're probably wondering to yourself why would you ever want to unlock your phone like that? You have to touch it anyway to interact with it so why not just use the fingerprint sensor? Well let's say your hands are dirty or something and you're baking bread in the kitchen and you don't want to wash off your hands. You can actually unlock your phone with just your hand and then you you can control your phone with your hand as well. So we're gonna do a demonstration for you here. We haven't been able to get the hand ID feature to work when we hold the phone in our hands. So in this case, we're gonna put it down on a table. So all you do is you hold your hand over the camera and it should recognize me. Sometimes it doesn't like to. There we go, now we're in. Okay, so you see there's this little green and purple bar up here. That means it's searching for your hand. And once you see that, you kind of make this claw shape with your hand. It's a little awkward. And you can see a little digital version of my hand on here. It's kind of cool. Um, so these are two different shortcuts that I've set up, YouTube and Google Assistant. And if I want to do Assistant and do a voice command, just kind of move my hand over and it starts listening to me. Uh, this is pretty much the only feature I found that works, uh, that, I, that I would want to use. Uh, but let's try YouTube because that's what LG uses in, in a lot of its examples. So we'll get the feature to work again and move over to YouTube and do it again to press play. We can do volume too. Just kind of twist your hand. Now, in my testing, this has been very hit or miss, and when it misses, it's really frustrating. And honestly, you'll just want to use your hands with your phone just like you normally would. 
Who is the LG G8 for, and should you buy it? To be honest, I really can't say who this is for because it seems like there are so many other great phones on the market at this price point that the LG G8 just kind of gets overshadowed. Don't get me wrong, I do like this phone a lot. It's a good phone at everything that you would expect it to be good at, it's good at. It has a great screen, it has good audio, it has a bunch of extras that uh, a lot of people are after. But I think LG is focusing in the wrong areas. Now its dual camera system is kind of a step behind the competition. It's nowhere near Pixel 3 level and it's not even up to the Galaxy S10 level. And that's really too bad because this is a good phone. It's just priced a little too high. It launches this week for $820 in the US. And I think it's a little too high of an asking price for what you get here, especially when there are things like the Pixel 3 and the Galaxy S10 out on the market right now. So I wanna know what you think about the LG G8. Would you buy it? And do you think it's better than say the Galaxy S10? Be sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and we have a ton of other camera samples and performance benchmarks and everything you could ever want to know about this phone in our full review linked in the description. Alright, thanks for watching, see you in the next one.